This week's title for First Chapter Friday is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. The Poet X has won numerous awards, including the National Book Award for Young People's Literature and the Michael L. Prince Award, which is recognized as a best book for high schoolers. This New York Times best-selling novel in verse by an award-winning slam poet is about an Afro-Latina heroine who tells her story of living in Harlem with blazing words and powerful truth. Audio presents The Poet X, a novel by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is the author. To Catherine Bolaños and my former students at Buck Lodge Middle School, 2010 to 2012 and all the little sisters yearning to see themselves. This is for you. Part one, in the beginning was the word. Friday, August 24th, stoop sitting. The summer is made stoop sitting. And since it's the last week before school starts, Harlem is opening its eyes to September. I scope out this block I've always called home. Watch the old church ladies, chancletas flapping against the pavement, their mouths letting loose a train of island Spanish as they spread, he said, she said. Pipa pote from down the block as he opens the fire hydrant so the little kids have a sprinkler to run through. Listen to honking calves with bachata blaring from their open windows, compete with basketballs echoing from the little park. Laugh at the viejos, my father not included, finishing their dominoes tournament with hard slaps and yells of capicu. Shake my head as even the drug dealers posted up near the building smile more in the summer. Their hard scowl softening into glue-eyed stares in the direction of the girls in summer dresses and short shorts. Hey, yo, Siomara, you need to start wearing dresses like that. Shit, you'd be wifed up before going back to school. Especially knowing you church girls are all freaks. But I ignore their taunts, enjoy this last bit of freedom, and wait for the long shadows to tell me when mommy is almost home from work when it's time to sneak upstairs. Unhideable. I am unhideable, taller than even my father, with what mommy has always said was a little too much body for such a young girl. I am the baby fat that settled into D cups and swinging hips so that the boys who called me a whale in middle school now ask me to send them pictures of myself in a thong. The other girls call me conceited, ho, thought, Fast, when your body takes up more room than your voice, you are always the target of well-aimed rumors, which is why I let my knuckles talk for me, which is why I learned to shrug when my name was replaced by insults. I forced my skin just as thick as I am. Mira, muchacha. is mommy's favorite way to start a sentence. And I know I've already done something wrong when she hits me with, look, girl, this time it's, Mira, muchacha, Marina from across the street told me you were on the stoop again talking to los vendedores. Like usual, I bite my tongue and don't correct her because I hadn't been talking to the drug dealers. They'd been talking to me. But she says she doesn't want any conversation between me and those boys or any boys at all. And she better not hear about me hanging out like a wet shirt on a clothesline, just waiting to be worn, or she would go ahead and be the one to wring my neck. Oíste? She asks but walks away before I can answer. Sometimes I want to tell her the only person in this house who isn't heard is me. Names. I am the only one in the family without a biblical name. Shit, Siomara isn't even Dominican. I know because I googled it. It means one who is ready for war. And truth be told, that description is about right. Because I even try to come into the world in a fighting stance. Feet first. Had to be cut out of mommy after she'd given birth to my twin brother Xavier just fine. And my name labors out of some people's mouths in that same awkward and painful way. Until I have to slowly say, Siomara. 
I've learned not to flinch the first day of school as teachers get stuck stupid trying to figure it out. Mommy says she thought it was a saint's name. Gave me this gift of battle and now curses how well I live up to it. My parents probably wanted a girl who would sit in the pews wearing pretty florals and a soft smile. They got combat boots and a mouth silent until it's sharp as an island machete. The first words. Pero tú no eres fácil. Is a phrase I've heard my whole life. When I come home with my knuckles scraped up. Pero tú no eres fácil. When I don't wash the dishes quickly enough. Or when I forget to scrub the tub. Pero tú no eres fácil. Sometimes it's a good thing. When I do well on an exam or the rare time I get an award. Pero tú no eres fácil. When my mother's pregnancy was difficult. And it was all because of me. Because I was turned around and they thought that I would die. Or worse that I would kill her. So they held a prayer circle at church and even Father Sean showed up at the emergency room. Father Sean, who held my mother's hand as she labored me into the world and Papi paced behind the doctor who said this was the most difficult birth she'd been a part of. But instead of dying, I came out wailing, waving my tiny fists. And the first thing Papi said, the first words I ever heard, pero tú no eres fácil. You sure ain't an easy one. Mommy works. Cleaning an office building in Queens. Rides two trains in the early morning so she can arrive at the office by eight. She works at sweeping and mopping, emptying trash bins and being invisible. Her hands never stop moving, she says. Her fingers rubbing the material of plastic gloves like the pages of her well-worn Bible. Mommy rides the train in the afternoon, another hour and some change to get to Harlem. She says she spends her time reading verses, getting ready for the evening mass. And I know she ain't lying, but if it were me, I'd pop my head against the metal train wall, hold my purse tight in my lap, close my eyes against the rocking, and try my best to dream.